What's up guys, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another toy review and got a good one for you. Actually a, a pretty new figure on deck to take a look at and I love this company. I love everything they're doing about it and that is YOLO Park. This is the YOLO Park Transformers 1 Megatron, the COGD edition. So the actual Megatron, not the D16. It says Megatron slash D16, but this is the actual Megatron, the one we care about. I don't care about that dork that's running around with Optimus Prime and having these weird adventures. We won't get into that. <laughs> this is the one I wanted. This is the one that looks cool. This is the one that's got the cannons and everything else. Made by Yolo Park. You guys have heard me rant and rave about Yolo Park. Really, to me, the toy company of the year. I think they've done tremendous work. But let's take a quick look at old Megs here. Transformers 1 coming out here in a couple weeks. There is the front box. You can see he also turns into a tank. Boo! Tank is boo. If you're from the 80s, Megatron's a gun. Anyway, <laughs> Megatron's a gun. Some nice uh, looking shots on the sides as well. And then the back kind of gives you a rundown of everything you can look forward to in this line. We've got Alita 1, Bumblebee. Optimus Prime and Megatron. We also have their smaller editions. These are called the un the Uncogged editions. Is that what it's called? Cogless editions. There we go. Uh, before they actually get the component to their sparks to uh, transform, I guess is what it is. But uh, nice look at Megatron. Another new feature on this is we actually have a window this time around. So there's a look at all of the pieces of Megatron. Of course, this is a model kit. And then some more nice, glorious, glamour photos of old Megs. So there you go. There's a rundown of the box. Let's get him cracked open. We're going to do a quick piece by piece put together of Megs, and then we'll compare him to some other Yolo Park offerings that they've kicked out this year. Okay, that was a little frustrating putting him together. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is the weakest YOLO park I have in my collection. Is that to say that it's bad? No, that's not to say it's bad, but I think YOLO park has really set themselves up so high that when we get something less than what we've gotten in the past with the G1 stuff and the Rise of the Beast stuff, you're, you're a little let down. Uh, before we get into it too much, this guy is not super expensive. I paid $30 for him. Uh, plus a little bit of shipping. I think the total was 40 bucks total. So you're getting a good size action figure here for about $30 plus, you know, five, six dollars shipping. So first of all, the paint looks really good. Let's get in close here. Look at the paint. The paint looks nice. It's very silver. You've got the Decepticon logo there on his shoulder and the paint looks great. It's a nice homage to the G1 uh, Megatron. So I think the paint's really nice. You got the silver, You've got this gunmetal, the black, even on the back here, nice silver on the backpack, which is, I guess, a pseudo jetpack. I haven't seen the movie. The movie's not out, so I wouldn't know. Fusion Cannon looks cool, too. Uh, one thing that's a little weird about the Fusion Cannon, you guys can kind of see there, it's got this, like, gap. It's gappy. It's kind of not together all the way. I don't like that. I think that's a little bit of a misstep. His secondary gun is cool, too. Now, this on the Studio Series version will almost have like the nose piece of the cannon. So that'll look a little different too. But this one's trying to be a little more 
uh, movie accurate, if you will. So accessories, what does he come with? He comes with the two cannons there that we pointed out. Also comes with the uh, slightly open splay hands. He has some fisted hands here, which are pretty cool. Got the silver with the gun metal. So that looks cool. And then he comes with a set of open hands as well. So not quite as much as some of the other offerings. Focus camera. There we go. Not quite as, some as, as much as some of the other offerings that uh, Yolo Park has done, but still a good amount of accessories. So where are the issues with this figure for me? Uh, it's in... I don't think it's really in quality, but you can tell he doesn't wobble too much. I think it's just really the robot design. He's very tall and he's very lanky, lengthy, whatever that word is. And um, I think it kind of hurts the design a little bit. The head sculpt's really cool. I think it's a very nice head sculpt. I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. The yellow eyes are a little weird, but again, that's not the figure's fault. That's the, that's the design's fault. He's got some nice black on his... Uh, Kind of chin pieces there as well. And then the back. It's like an early uh, modernized Megatron version. So that's cool too. But I think my main issues are just with the, the design of the figure and, and how it's presented. Yolo Park itself, there's some really tight joints and some really loose joints. So let's go over it a little bit. Really tight joints are the arms. Arms are super tight. They will go in and out. We're not going to go over this too much. We'll go. This, will, this part will get out of the way. As you can see there, and it will go up. It is super tight. I'm not going to mess with it too much because that is really tight on both arms of my copy. So I'm not going to mess with the arms too much. His head is on a ball joint. He looks down really good. He looks up really good. Side, side, all around. So the ball joint for that is really cool. As you could tell when I was messing with that, he's got a good ball joint for his waist. He has an ab crunch back and forth. That looks cool too. The legs will splay out. These guys will get out of the way a little bit. You're not going to get them in the most extreme pose out, but it will do some. Be careful when you're doing that. These don't shift too much. I haven't messed with this guy too much, but these seem like they're going to be a little bit of a problem, but I would be careful when you're splitting. You don't need your Transformers doing the splits anyway, so don't mess with it. <laughs> uh, the hips, there is no drop down hip, so just keep that in mind. And as you can see, this is a little loose. So that bothers me as well. The knees actually been pretty good, and they've got a good, pretty good range of motion. I think we can get more out of it, but again, I don't want to mess with them too much because, you know, I'm just kind of messing with them right now to show you guys. Uh, the, eh, the ankles, good rockers. You can see those rock back and forth. They don't really go up. This part gets in the way, so they don't really go up. They do go back a long ways too, though, as you can see there. And then this part also moves too. So he's got a bit of a toe joint as well. So, I mean, articulation is fine. It's above what Hasbro is going to do. Hasbro is going to be a deluxe figure. It's going to be much smaller. This guy's about seven inches tall, seven, eight inches tall. So you're going to get this guy in some really cool poses. The Fusion Cannon is cool. Um, like I said earlier, I think the only part I don't like is this. That it's kind of look like, kind of looking like it's falling apart. I wish they had put something there to to curb that but uh also elbows elbows go all the way forgot to tell you guys about that the elbows go all the way so there's another problem he falls apart when you're posing him so if you go too far there goes his gun and his uh forearm piece so let's put that back together real quick that that's a bit of a problem too i don't like that also the hands very tight as well those are just ball joints so you're gonna go in and out and all around with those as well and he, he, I think the part that he's the worst when it comes to being wobbly and stuff is right here. So you're going to need to get him in a really good pose to where he doesn't wobble around. See, you can tell as I'm moving him, he, he just kind of wobbles up here a little bit. But overall, pretty good. I mean, for 30 bucks, again, Yolo Park is killing it. The design looks great. I mean, it's super movie accurate. Really nothing wrong with the design. I think there's just a couple of little nitpicks that I have where... I didn't see some of the stuff with uh, past offerings from Yellow Park that I'm seeing with this guy. So let's get out a couple more Yellow Parks. Let's uh, do a comparison and see how he stacks up with some other guys. All right, obviously, this is the comparison everyone's going to want to see. How does he stack up to the G1 Megs? Now, let's keep in mind the G1 Megs is a $60 figure. The Transformers 1 Megs is a $30 figure. Much beefier guy, heavier, got more to him, but he is double the price. So it makes sense. Now, they really are about the same height. Honestly, the Transformers 1 version 
if you look at it, he's taller. Which, I don't know, maybe Megs went on a diet, or he shrunk, or I don't know what happened, but he is taller than the G1 Meg. So that's a little interesting. Uh, I've heard a lot of people complain that he's too leggy. And boy, when you look at this, he is too leggy. He's way too leggy. So I don't know if he added like an extra panel to himself or something between Transformers 1 and G1, but he is very leggy. And again, that's not Yolo Park's fault. That's just the design of the character. So there you go. Um, I'm going to take this all day. This is a nice one, but the G1 Megs, of course, is a little better. Let's go ahead and move him out. We're going to brain in the ultimate nemesis of this guy. And boy, he really towers over uh, Prime here. Really good. But the Prime, again, the Prime's got die cast. This doesn't have die cast. It's an AMK version compared to an AMK Pro. Again, I think it's worth the extra money to get the, the premium YOLO parks if they're available, which right now the only the premium ones have been the G1 character. Starscream's coming up next. But again, I think they actually look pretty cool together. That's not a bad thing. I, they did a good job with that. So there you go. And then my favorite one, hard to believe it's not a G1, but my favorite YOLO park, and we're not even going to get him in the frame he's so big let's see if i can raise up the camera a little bit is scourge and these guys are the same price and oh man scourge blows him away it's not even close honestly for the the lesser priced amk offerings for all the transformers that we've got so far scourge is the best by a mile i don't know if he beats prime and megatron for the amk pros the 59.99 versions but this scourge is phenomenal he whips this Megatron. The detail is just insane. So, and he's bigger. He's a lot bigger. He he's about a inch and a half taller than this Megatron. All right, there you have it, guys. There is the AMK Pro Transformers One Megatron. Again, I think he's a super nice figure. Um, I do have a few nitpicks with him, but I definitely would suggest getting him if you're at all interested in the movie. If you're interested in the character. Um, I'm not really interested in the movie, but I did like the way that they portrayed Megatron. And I think this is a pretty solid figure. I'm going to go ahead and give him 7.3 out of 10. I think there's some improvements, but overall, a pretty nice figure once again from Yolo Park. So there you go. If you guys enjoyed this review, comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Go see Transformers 1.